Hello everybody and thank you for joining today. In today's episode, we shall be concerning ourselves with our Lord and Savior, DOS, in the incarnation Fridos that I'm actually very fond of. And you see while I'm saying just a few words of friendly greeting to you, it already booted. Huh? How's that for a booting speed? And this is, of course, my trusty Windows XP machine. And Windows XP is in no danger for that, as it slumbers happily on its hard disk. Whereas I am driving this entire show here today from one such friend as these. As this, like, look at it. <laughs> We're having here the Volkov Commander, a knockoff of the Norton Commander, which is just having in its essence 65 kilobytes in size with a little bit of uh, fluff, help and so on, but still reasonably small. <laughs> they are smaller, but I like this one for not being too small. And then we're having all sorts of programs, which given that we are handling things here for just above a megabyte, this is, do I want to quit? No. Uh, no, Ugh, I want just F9, the menu. So here you have a little bit of info about the system, right? So <laughs> our, our floppy actually offers us still 106 kilobyte free. In other words, for exercising one's creativity there regarding the nice development software samples I now have on this machine. Of course, all of you who haven't slept under a rock will recognize this thing here. <coughs> right, perhaps the, the only thing more famous than this is QBASIC, but QBASIC was just a little bit too big and I wouldn't have had that much space for other things. This, however, works just well enough. And does not disappoint. And is exactly what one should have, of course, on every DOS system, a basic interpreter. Now that we have basic, what else do we have? Well, as you can see just right under it, we can continue here. We're having also Prolog. Now this is from Expert Systems Limited. And it is sometimes found as ESL Pro. Like something like that is sometimes the name of the file. Yeah, for here, IBM PCXT, also such futuristic uh, operating systems for the 386. Then you're having VMS, which is nowadays making sort of a little comebackish thing. <laughs> and Unix, which has nowadays been all but eclipsed by Linux. Well, VMS I find, of course, most ironic because for years I was reading uh, nonsense like, yeah, there's all this assembler part uh, and, and there is such a CPU ring architecture which is not reflected in the x86 world, blah, blah. And in the end they ported it, huh? <laughs> Could have done that earlier, would have been healthier. So let's assert that... Socrates is a man. Ah, focus. Very good. Now, let's assert but this time assert Z, so it is after Socrates. Man. Plato. Uh, and finally, let us assert. <laughs> I'm always laughing when I read Plato. Like, my God, do you have to be such a lover that the word Platonic is formed after you? <laughs> and then you're having Aristotle. And there we go. So, is is Plato? A man. Yeah, absolutely he is. And what guys do we know? 
Yeah, more, more. Socrates we know. Very good. We know Plato, yes. And we know Aristotle. And whom else do we know? Nobody we know. <laughs> and, and are there any guys? Yes, guys exist. So, <laughs> Prologue is working just nicely over here. By the way, what you could just see is also one of the reasons why these artificial intelligence approaches in the 80s based on that um, hit the wall at some point. The thing is that this is made to handle known and un, uh, like yeah, positive and negative knowledge. Unknowns are not handled super gracefully, right? There's more yes. And, and then it tells me no, it just says no because because it hasn't uh, received input about any. It doesn't mean that objectively, of course, there are none. A ah, bit of data and yeah. Anyway, if one is careful, Prolog is a wonderful tool. I love Prolog actually. And then we're having a small <laughs> variant of Xlisp. I went for the small variant because I didn't bother with the extended memory configuration. But nonetheless, I do still have a Lisp interpreter. There it goes. And we can make, I don't know, multi of X. Ah, define. Let's defun it. No fun. So defun multi of X is simply to times x and mul two of six five five three six is output it's not hanging on on any integer overflow thingy okay very good so i'm having here a decent lisp interpreter i always liked xlisp because it's also available for cpm and that gives you something somewhat more standard compliant because you're having oftentimes in the early 80s such a very idiosyncratic weird lisps and with xlisp your Memory may be a little bit more constrained because the thing itself is not too small. But at least you get to work with something where what you code would be useful in other places. So I have by now shown you three languages, basic, prolog and Lisp. Now let's go to the language everybody seems to very much care about. <laughs> so that, of course, would be C. And yeah. I've written here already a short program called hello. Here you can see it, nothing, nothing remarkable, who knows how much. And this we shall now compile. I'll just quit the Volkov commander so that it doesn't get in the way of us doing so. PCC hello dot C. Loading the compiler takes, of course, a good moment. Uh oh! <laughs> ah. Well, that was not planned, that much I can tell you. Um, that's also very realistic, though. And now one would be pretty shocked and, and say, retry, retry. And then we will just let it abort. <laughs> right? This is like genital failure reading disc when it's on a hard disc and you're having like, who's genital failure and why is he reading my disc? Well, <laughs> I promise you, a minute ago, it did compile it. The only thing afterwards you would have to say is PCCL hello to link it and it would work. My word on it. <laughs> but such is our fate here today. Well, I hope nonetheless you enjoyed the video. And maybe it was teaching a good lesson as to 
why people decided to move on from the skets. And with that, I really hope to greet you here soon again as a regular guests. Until we meet again, I wish you a most wonderful time. And from me, goodbye.